Hello guys, it is Patrick here, Egnaut Plicker, and we are carrying on with part two today of our um, sea betting presentation. I'm planning on doing um, between two and three parts, probably three, by the time we get through all of this uh, jargon. So we're going to get get straight into it. So sea betting examples in general. So if you um, haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one. The uh, description's in the link below. Um, as for everybody else who's got here, thank you so much, and let's carry on. So previously, we've gone through um, advantages and disadvantages of sea betting. We've gone through a lot of the generalized rules when thinking about sea betting and why. We've talked about when to bet small. We've talked about when to bet big. Um, and now we're going through some of the generalizations in terms of, like, just these are the different types of boards. Like, what do I want to do on them? I know for a fact that a lot of you guys at home are going to be like... Ugh, they don't, you know, you may have GTO Wizard, you may have um, Pyasolver, you may have Monkasolver, whatever, whatever, you you may have software that you use, but there'll be a lot of you who I know for a fact won't use um, or won't have access to a lot of pieces of software or like correct ranges for a lot of spots. So you're not going to be able to sort of do a lot of your own studying and just go, oh, these are, I've opened and now the board's ASX, um, ASXX, it's quite dry. Oh, the board's like... 10 high, uh, the board's monotone, what do I do, what do I do, you know, as a disclaimer, I'll start with the bottom, these are generalizations and subject to a lot of specific hand dynamics and changes, it's just a fact, that there is no answer that just says, look, you're going to bet small here, you're going to bet big here all the time, like, you're going to, like, it, again, as we said in the first video, it comes down to all the different variables, right, who's got the nut edge, who's got the rate, um, the overall range advantage, like, how many good hands do you have? How many good hands do they have? How does their range play against yours? Like, do you want to bet small? Do, do, do you want to bet big? Why? Do you, do you see, like, there's just so many variables. Um, you cannot just say this is what you do or that's what you don't do all the time, okay? Especially not in real time. But um, just a couple of generalizations. So, for example, when, when we're thinking about, um, like, what to do on a lot of different types of boards. So what I've done is I've outlined a lot of the most... Um, sort of the most generalized ones I could I could think of um in a lot of situations and again these are subject to change based on the positions but but just generally okay um what we're going to look at is what they are a little bit of a brief description um and what sizes we may choose and why so I'm not going to go I'm not going to spend half an hour going through each different one right it will be here all day but um excuse me um, just thinking about these types of um, textures. So we've got dry ASEX boards, right? Generally, like again, depending on the position, of course, you, you just generally get to bet small to medium most of the time. So the board's like A7-5 rainbow, for example. You can just bet small and often because you just have a lot of really good hands. You open loads of offsuit and suited ASEX in loads of different positions that interact with an ASEX often. And you can do shitloads of checking if you want to as well. Um, Nice and simple. When you start, I'm not going to go one by one by one by one, but generally as you start going, and again, depending on the positions, right? But um, generally as you start going lower down the textures like King X towards Queen X and below, that again, depending on the textures, that's when you start to like not be allowed to just bet a third or check most of the time, like the ASX. Because you open a lot of ASX, suited and unsuited, you generally get to bet small and often most of the time. When the boards start becoming like dry King XX, like King 7-5, it now starts becoming more situational, like what position are you opening from? How condensed is your range? You know, is the other boards like, are they are they, are they single race pots? Are they three bet pots, four bet pots? That's when it starts becoming like, now do I bet more often or do I check, for example? If you open under the gun and the ball's like king seven five again, like don't sit here and backseat me. I'm not looking for just specific situations. I'm just looking for generalizations. But when the boards are like king high, you you get quite a lot of sizings, but just generally quite small. Often again, depending on the situation that you're in, as you start getting to like queen high, jack high, ten high, that quite dry boards. This is where you start to like you start raising the stakes up a bit in terms of your sizings because you just don't have as much like queen x and jack x and ten x. Like, your range doesn't just start, like, hitting, like, a queen X board as hard as it hits an ace X board. Yeah, you have, like, queens, kings, aces more than villain and a lot of single raise pots and ace queen in some situations. But at the same time, it's like you forgot all of these, like, you know, king highs and ace highs and pairs that don't want to bet this board 
as much, right? Compared to like an Ace X or King X. When the boards start becoming like Jack High, Ten High, that's where you really start to like, again, depending on the positions, but again, you generally start really starting to bet bigger now. You don't have to necessarily just over bet, but you just bet bigger most of the time. Yeah. When the again, when the boards start becoming relatively dynamic, like you start adding flush draws, you start going like Jack Ten, King, Queen, you know, again, <laughs> subject to positions that's when you start like adding in some more mix sizes like small to medium okay um but generally quite small like say for example you open you know you open king queen under the gun um i don't know the button flats like you can just bet small a lot of the time on like king queen eight because you just yeah the small the, the button's quite condensed calling you but at the same time they don't flat queens a whole bunch they don't flat kings you know, they three bet a lot of king queen suited and king queen off, for example. So you, you just get to bet small and often a lot of the time. You know, if you were in a three bet pot, you get to bet really small a lot of the time. You can bet like 10%, 20%, you know, a lot of the time because you just you just get to, right? Because you, you interact with it. The A6 board, you bet like a third a lot of the time. When you start going to these like um, small to medium range boards, again, it depends. I've said this on every single sentence I've started with, but like it, it really does boil down to who hits them harder if you open the small blind compared to open the hijack you will interact with seven eight nine harder in some situations than you will others do you open jack 10 off pure in one position and not the other do you open like seven eight suited very often in one position and not the other do you flop straights often in this position compared to opening in another position does the big blind have more flushes than you yes they will obviously so do you see like it massively varies it, 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 this is why we went through generalizations guys for like nearly an hour is because you need to start thinking about the whys and the what you know more than just like oh it's a modern board this is what i do oh it's king queen seven this is what i do well you need to start you need to start learning why because as soon as you learn the whys you can start answering your own questions and you can start thinking for yourself so in real time when you start getting into these situations again and again and again and again instead of just going oh it's king queen five i've got no fucking clue i guess i have aces and kings more often i'll just do this no you need to start saying well i know you know I know the villain's best hands. Uh, he doesn't have many best hands. Um, I get to do what I want. I can bet small and little and often on these types of board textures. Or do I do I get to check and bet big? You know, do I do I overbet and check it? Do you see like you you're understanding how your range is interacting with the board and against your villain's range, and you're learning why that's dictating how you're sort of going about betting or if you're going to bet at all and what size. Rather than just saying, oh, I guess I'll bet small often. Yeah, it's it's really important that you start learning these types of like this here. This is a bunch of what's. You know, this isn't great compared to the whys. The whys, are everything. The what's. This this is just ticking a box. I know that a lot of you at home are just going to want to know answers to a lot of questions straight off the bat, right? But it's these whys that you're learning here in these previous slides that the value most like mostly compared to just like a few examples here okay we've already gone through a lot of these as well ace king x on the big um early positions versus the big blind we know we're doing a lot of overbetting and checking we went through that in the um, earliest earlier slides monotone boards were generally betting small c betting flops because we just don't want to do it in we went through that already paired boards are interesting because in three bet pots most of the time you do a lot of larger betting um especially when you're raising uh when you're three betting in um like from the small blind for example or when you've got quite um condensed ranges or you're um you've got a lot of like nutted over pair advantages you generally just you want to leverage your range by saying look i've got i want to bet big or check because i protect all these hands that i've missed on this like seven seven five board but when i have these strong over pairs or the all the trips or whatever or the boats i just want to bet big bet big and jam and get called for value. And then when I'm bluffing with bottom of range, like nine ten suited on like four four five, you know, you put massive pressure on um, villains like sevens and eights and sixes and whatnot uh, on like four four five. Do you see? Like you're one or the other. You, you don't, you know, you're, you're selling that you've got a really good fucking hand or that you don't and you decide rather than just betting small and just going from there, you see. Um, in single raise pots, the so this is single raise, the low pad boards often mix sizes because again, it's like, again, depending on the situation that you're in, you know, you don't need to just leverage all the time and just say, look, I need, I'm just going to bet big every single time. A lot of situations where you just got like quite a condensed range, you can just bet small. But it's when you start three betting and ranges become, you know, 
like quite honest and you need to be careful or sorry less honest even um you're very like sort of polarized between good hands and bad hands and a lot of your value range might miss a board texture that's where you've got to leverage like big bets and checks but you know again if you you know you open and the board's like a seven five you can just bet small if the board's like four four five you know again if you're raising in the small blind your range is way wider right compared to like under the gun right so you need to be a bit more careful with what sizes you choose and how often um, you choose them to protect all the hands in between um in three bet pots on paired boards you generally bet really big often whereas the single race pots you can kind of mix and faff about um and on the sort of try uh the tritone boards where it's just like ace 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 king 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 etc um we generally bet a high frequency um for a small size generally um it again it kind of depends but like especially on like ace 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 king 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 queen 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 etc you, you can just bet really really small really often generally the the the, the tri boards generally favor who's got the the, the 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 nut advantage with the flopped boats so for example if the board's like eight 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 and you've got you've got and you're raising under the gun you know you're going to have aces and kings and queens more more so than like a small blind flat will for example right you know something like that and again, we've said it 15 million times, but these are generalizations. These are not direct answers that are going to be the same or they are going to change. Because, but again, you're learning what the whys are and what the changes are going to be. The weather changes all the time, right? You need to know, well, I mean, you don't technically know, you need to know why the weather's changing, but you, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find examples, right? But you, you need to learn what, why things are happening and what is going into your head for your um, requirements to see bet and why and how much rather than just going, oh, no, no, I just bet small and often, okay? So see betting examples in general in three bet, four bet and five bet pots. So this is just one slide because we're mainly focusing on single raise to see how much information there is in fucking sing in see betting. It's just, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, so when thinking about see betting generally in three bet, um four bet and five bet pots uh what's the best way to say this i guess i'll just read it off the sheet and then try and find some um, explanations so range and nut advantage is now even more important because obviously there's more money in the middle ranges are with both um hero and villain or villains are going to be more condensed and more sort of value heavy uh, it's all sort of like nutted heavy um a lot of the time like that you're not going to call a three bet with four five offsuit are you you know, you're more likely to have stronger condensed ranges when you're either three betting or getting three bet, and then then four bet is even more, and then five bet is even more, right? And there's more money in the middle to win and fight for. Um, showdown value starts to go down to some extent in three bet pots. Not not that it's irrelevant, but it doesn't mean you just get to bluff everything all the time. But it means on a lot of textures, you you now start favoring betting more than checking in a lot of spots because you just want to win the money in the middle. You want to start, um, your range is a bit more condensed and narrow. They're not just sort of wide as hell in a lot of situations like single rays. So you, you kind of have to say, look, I'm going for value or I'm bluffing. And I'm more focused on trying to win that money in the middle and put pressure with a stronger nut advantage and range advantage than I would be if I was in a single raise pot. All right, don't just go, oh, I've got ace king, I have to check 100% of the time. On a queen 5-3, you might actually just favor betting a lot of the time. You block a lot of um, villains continuing range, which is more valuable in a three bet pot than you would in a single raise when you've got like nut showdown. So it's something to think about. Uh, paired boards as we said just before paired boards mostly mix medium to large sizes when betting uh, um, uh, medium large size when betting and then doing a decent amount of checking because they're just polarized you know the small blind three bets against like i don't know the cutoff for example the gut off calls the board's like a eight ten i don't know something like that four four five whatever as we said previously you kind of say you want to bet you want to mix between checking and betting big you don't really want to bet small that often because you don't want to bet real range for a small size. You want to do tons of checking with like loads of ace X and stuff like that and showdown and just a lot of hands that just don't kind of want to bet this. You've got like ace jack, ace queen, ace king. You don't want to bet those very often on like eight, eight, nine. You, you want to bet your really, really good hands, like your strong over pairs, for example, are more or more often than not for a big size or medium size, or you want to check them deceptively. And then you want to do the same with um, like bottom of range. Like, you, well, you'd want to mostly bet them, but sometimes check. And when you bet, you bet big. And then all your hands in between, just just check. 
You see? So, like, that's what you do. Um, range dependent, but higher cardboards generally favoring the aggressor, bet small to medium, and bet more often. So, like, on the flip side, when you've got, like, the ace-x boards, the king-x boards, like king-queen, ace-queen, whatever, you know, king-king-five, like, stuff like that, that favor the three-better, the four-better, the five-better, like, with the nut edge, aces, kings, ace-king, queens, whatnot. You just don't have to, you know, you, you can just bet small and often. You don't have to risk that much to attain a lot of fold equity. And also, if you're going for value, it's just a setup bet. You can absolutely get stacks in by the river, in a lot, especially 100 to 150 big, uh, BBs in loads of situations where you're playing turns and rivers. If you start learning over betting uh, on turns and rivers, you will absolutely get the money in against hands you're trying to stack, as long as they're stacking off correctly. So, yeah. Um, think and then finally think about monotone boards so again generally not always but most of the time we're still betting smaller on a lot of uh, monotone textures it um, can vary somewhat based on what positions you're in as we've said like some some positions um, the um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head I can't think of one off the top of my head but um, it, it, it comes down to like uh, on monotone boards it's not just a case of like who's got the best over pair in three bet four bet pots it's more a case of like yeah who's got over pair advantage but now there's a shitload of flushes directly on the flop which means that it's not just a case of oh i've got more aces i can do what i want who's got all the who's got all the straights who's got all the two pairs the sets the flushes so it's still generally favoring being small okay so again, as a study tool, I've just added in, and there, there are loads more sizes than this. This is not like a complete um, guide by any means. But this is a lot of general sizes that are quite common. The most common ones would be 33%, 50%, 75%. Um, you'll have different ones. You'll have 60, you'll have 66. You'll have 65, you'll have like 20, um, you can have like 9%, 20, 22%, whatever, fuck knows, you can have different types of overbedding, you can have like 250, 375, and so on and so on. Um, there's loads of different sizes in, in GTO, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them, I don't know all of them, but these are just some of the, the, the most common ones. So, just very, very brief explanation with a lot of these. Um, again, this is more like the watts, you know, just ticking boxes on. I know what people want to 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 to, to get out of these um, this presentation, but if you want to skip through this, then you can. If you want to do this on your own and just look through these and just talk through them with yourself, fine. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the next five ten minutes just going over these. So, just generally, then the really small sizes, beginning with ten percent. So, generally preferred size of ten percent um, pot is mostly for four bet and five bet pots um this is one of the most preferred sizes so if we're on like a monotone board as well we can bet 10 percent some of the time if we want to as well we can bet 20 percent on monotone boards but we generally bet really 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 small um on fa on textures that are either extremely wet like monotone or just a lot of textures that you know are generally favored c bet size in four bet and five bet pots is like 10 percent and 25 percent some of the you know most of the time Sometimes we can bet big, um, but uh, that's what we're mostly favoring in terms of sizing. 20% is little and often with range and heavy advantage. So say, for example, you know, you, you three bet small blinds, button calls, the ball's like king, queen, five. You know, you've got more ace, king, because the button's going to be um, four betting ace, king a bunch. It's going to be four betting queens a bunch. It's going to be four betting kings and aces. Because you've got a, a condensed range. You've got a very, very aggressive range. Uh, you, well, you still have... Still have a lot of hands that you know you can three bet like queen jack off and stuff. But what I'm saying is your range is more condensed overall than it would be if you were just if this was a single raise pot. You um, have a really heavy nut advantage. Your villa doesn't have kings and queens and ace king and aces and whatnot a whole bunch. You just get to bet small, but you know you don't have to bet a third. You could bet twenty percent, for example. You know that's quite an optimal size um, as an example. Generally, 25% uh, again is just one of the other 4-bet and 5-bet preferred sizes, so I've just ha put hashtag 2. 33% is the probably the most generalized go-to size um, for a lot of single rays and 3-bet pots. It's a little and often in most situations generally does the trick, whether it's uh, exploitative or strategic. It's just a very, very good size. Uh, it's not always the most optimal, but in a lot of situations it's just a very good go-to size. Also, you know, monotone textures, you can you can go a third as well if you like. 50%, so it's quite funny because, again, 
with a different piece of training software, which they got wrong, was they were very, very focused on saying how bad 50% CB, um, betting was. They were me- I know they were talking about a lot of turns most of the time, but they were also talking about flops as well. Like, 50% is completely fine. Like, you'll find there's a lot of situations where you might mix between small and medium, like third and half you might mix between small medium and large you might mix between um you know the paired boards you might mix between like half and three quarters and over bet and so on you know you can choose like 50 percent. it's just a really nice kind of go-to middling middling of the road or middling of the pack size that just like if you bet a third you get floated too often so you want to start adding in some half pot sizes but you don't always want to just go massive so it kind of goes in between both doesn't it you don't just get 100 percent floated or you don't induce um more bluffs behind you it packs a punch but it's not too powerful where it's not too sort of uh you don't put too much money in and do it in or scare off um a weak range 16 75 percent well 60 percent starts off being that's the um in terms of multi-way situations 40 percent and 60 percent again generalized because there are massive deviations to this but across the board 40 percent and 60 percent are really really good uh, multi-way sizes so for example if you're betting sort of smaller um with more of more of your range or whether you're betting bigger um less often with more polarized strategy then generally um you mix between 40 and 60 a lot of the time you can also do things like two thirds and three quarters but just for the sake of today we're mainly focused on generalizations so those two are really really good um most common sizes 75 percent it packs the punch one two five is when you're super polarized so your 75 is more like you got good like better hands and checks and then overbetting is when you're really polarized and you've got really good hands and really bad hands with a lot of checking. Excuse me. I added it in for the sake of doing it because I wanted people to be aware of it. But in a lot of, it, well, in some situations, and this is more like four bet pots a lot of the time. And also, well, I suppose three bet, four bet pots overall. But um, where you say, like, you don't do a lot of, like, strategy and you just say, right, I'm just going to do a third because it, you know, I don't. I don't know a lot of sizes. I don't know why I'm doing it. I just know it works often. Technically, again, like 20% is more optimal than a lot of situations. And then on top of that, 10% is really optimal as well when you just want to bet really, 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 really small. But then you can go as little as one big blind. You could be in a four bet pot, UTG hijack, like king, king five or ace, king six, whatever. If you want to, you could bet like really, really, really small. In a complex strategy, if you had it in there, you could bet as little as one big blind. It's really funny. You get a button on a small blind. <coughs> you could bet range bet come king, queen, two. And you have like pocket nines. If you just want to bet your entire range on this board. If you want to, you can bet as little as one big blind. Fuck them. You can. You know, I, I'm not saying it's something that you should technically just start whacking into your 10 and now strategies. But it, it's something that you can do. And like you, you basically force your opponent on the most extreme end to really have to attack you. Otherwise, they just hope completely death over fold versus one big blind. You know, imagine being in a four bet pot and the guy bets one big blind. You'd probably think he was a fish. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cyborg. So again, finally, for the 15th millionth time, as a disclaimer, often general strategy can have multiple sizes in a lot of different situations at f- different frequencies to balance slash protect all parts of range which have different desired effects um, and also to be unpredictable um, and balanced. Which, so, for example, preferring folds, calls, etc. You will have different parts of your range that want to bet small in a lot of situations. You'll have different parts of your range that want to bet big in the same situations. Do you see, like, it all resorts back to the game of sticks. Who's got the who's got the sort of strongest stick? Who's got all the who's, who's with all the best hands? Who's got like um, also who's got the strongest stick? Who's got like a really lot? Who's got the biggest stick in terms of like like the range of all the middling hands that connect with the board? And the nut hands and nut hands. Do you see, like, in terms of like what you're doing and how you're doing it, it all keeps resorting back to who's got the best hands and who's got the most hands that interact with the board, and how the the, the two ranges um, fight each other with the um, board texture in the, in between them. Okay, it's a lot of information. It is ridiculous amounts of information to take in, guys. It it really is. So um, do bear with me. Okay. So moving on to um, uh, what components impact your decisions when it comes to c-betting and choosing sizes. 
Okay. Now again, we 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 we've, we've come back on the time. We, we've come back on what we said earlier with nut advantage and range advantage, and there is a slide um, coming up with that soon. But just generally, again, a few more things to think about when you're picking sizes. Single raise, three bet, four bet, five bet. Showdown gets diminished um, and block. Um, still there, it's still relevant, but it's just it's less of a priority in three bet, four bet, five bet pots, and we're more focused on. Um, what blockers can we use? Like, what's the blocker score, the blocker value of our hand? If ace king offsuit, which blocks, um, and the board's like king king seven five or king queen three, whatever, or, or sorry, ace, um, boards like um, ace seven five, and we've got like king queen. You know, we block ace king, we block ace queen, or do you see, like we block combos of like floats, we block combos of top pair, whatever. That's more valuable than just saying, oh, we've got not showdown one hundred percent of the time. We have to check. More so in like three bet, four, three bet, four bet, five bet pots. Position versus position again. Each position's range plays differently versus each other, just like chess pieces. Again, these are just some of the evaluative um, points that we've already gone over. Nut advantage: who has the who has more best hands, um, and then overall range for advantage: who has more combos of hands in between that interact with the board versus their opponent. Okay, and then finally, what is the texture of the board? wet versus dry texture and dynamic do we bet really small generally do we bet really big generally can we bet our range okay so those are some of the evalu evaluative points that we've gone over so far so we've gone over very briefly board texture so again this is slide two on what is impacting decisions to see bet um for sizes board texture we we, we went over this just briefly so we're going to go into a bit more detail now the texture of the board in between you is a massive factor when it comes down to do we bet big, do we bet small, do we bet often, do we bet range, do we check, you know, we're not just looking at range and nut advantage, we're also looking at the texture of the board, okay, you may have a nut advantage, but that doesn't mean that you just get to start over betting all the time, okay, so when the advantage is so strong, we can bet our entire range. So, for example, if the, if we let's just say we you know we open under the gun, the big blind defends, and the board's like king king five. We've got more. We we have pocket. We have pocket kings for quads, which they don't have. We have ace king for nut trips more than um, the big blind. The big blind will three bet some of the time with hands like king queen king jack suited. I suppose it you know maybe the UTG is a bad example uh, versus big blind's bad example because it does a lot of flatting. But do you, you kind of get where I'm going with this, right? Like a lot of like the nutted hands will generally raise on like you know pre-flop for king king five and they'll three bet pre-flop so by the time they get in a single raise pot to like king king five the the aggressor whether it's a single raise or a three bet will generally have more of these like nutted hands right so they can bet small and if the boards are really really favor favor um favorable for them like king queen five or whatever they can just bet range king king seven they can just bet the range 100 percent of the time because they can right for a small size when the boards are very dry as we said earlier generally you just again bet quite small and you start to bet more often just because you can um, especially the ace x boards and the king x boards you you generally can bet quite small and often um it depends how it depends how um wide your ranges are and it depends um on the whether you're in single raise three bet pots etc um it just comes down to who's got the best hands most of the time right Again, as we said previously as well, the more the dyna dynamic texture uh, gets, the more you have to be cautious. However, when the board's sort of like, it's getting wet, you now need to be careful that you don't just get to bet small all the time. You need to, you know, the board's like queen seven, nine with a flush draw. You don't just get to bet small all the time. You need to be a bit more careful. There's more hands that interact with the board. You may not have um, hands that want to just bet small. You probably bet big or check, for example more often and then when the dynamic gets really wet like monotone or is um as a main example you then go back to betting really really small and checking because you just want you don't want to do it in um with a lot of your hands even your nutted hands don't want to bet big a lot of the time because there's so many hands they need to protect um and it's well not so much protection but it's more just so like in your range you just don't have enough hands um so you just generally bet really 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 small a lot of the time to, to kind of be careful um not to allow villain to play really really well right if villain's got lots of if you if it's basically like a, a question of who's got the most flushes and you're just like blasting and you're just kind of allowing your opponent to just play really well against you in a lot of situations so you most of the time bet quite small 
um, on monotone boards and very wet textures. I don't know how well I've just I've kind of um, described that for you. So it might be better where you like maybe after you've what you've gone you've watched this uh, video, you might have to go back and just read some of these uh, some of these coaching points again because uh, I'm not still feel, I feel not feeling great still. So um, do bear with me if I'm uh, sort of uh, nodding off a little bit. Anyway, so as we've said uh, quite often so far is nut advantage and range advantage. This is just a, an extra slide saying what we've already said. However, it is explaining what um what nut advantage and range advantage do okay and what and how they impact the um our decision making process so i've made a, a separate slide for this to, to go through so this is something we've already talked about but it's just in writing so you can physically use it as a study tool okay so slide three for what components impact my decisions to see about and choose sizes so Nut advantage, and again, we said nut advantage is who's got all the, the top of range hands, and then the range advantage is who's got all of these hands in between, you know, who's got more of a condensed range, who's, who's got a range of hands that interact with the board more than the other guy. That's what a range advantage is compared to a nut advantage. When you have a nut advantage, okay, the nut advantage is dictating what sizes you choose. You say, right, I have the best hands more than this guy, so that's dictating what kind of sizes I may choose um, whether I check, whether I bet small, whether I bet big, okay? That's how you're kind of um, using that to uh, dictate what size you think you might choose. When it comes to range advantage, like who's got all the hands in the middle, um, more often than not, um, who needs to be careful, that's when you start thinking about um, how often you bet. So, for example, again, um, you might just say, look, I've got, a v I, I raise under the gun, the board's like ace-king-5, I like I have a nut advantage like hell against all the positions so in a single race pot so I just get to um, bet small and often most of the time under the gun right that's my my sizing if I'm on the button I have the same nut advantage however because my range is so much wider than it is under the gun that frequency um so how often I bet right those sizes will change so I might do a lot of checking and a lot of bigger betting because of my range, um, how my range interacts on the button, and then under the gun, my range is different. My range advantage is like my range. Sorry, my range overall is different, so I get to bet more like small and medium sizes um, compared to like the button. Like we said that at the beginning, right? Like Ace King Five, UTG versus Big Blind, and Button versus Big Blind. It's the same nut advantage, but the range is different. So you have to you have to be careful um, with what sizes you're choosing and how often you're choosing them. Lots of checks and huge bets on the button because we've got so many hands in between that we need to protect. Whereas UTG, um, we can do mix sizings, but generally quite small a lot of the time because there's not as many hands to protect and we have more of um, a condensed range. So as to evaluate, nut advantage determines sizing, range advantage dictates frequency. If you're using GTO, you can use the range um, range versus range explorer, which is amazing, where you can actually look at all the different combos and it helps you kind of literally see, ah, villain's got all of these hands or hero has all of these hands. That's why I need to be careful. And you can also say, ah, I've got all these really good hands that villain doesn't or the other way around. That's where I say, right, okay, maybe I won't bet so big or maybe I will bet big, okay? And then finally, um, who has a more relevant range to the board with more nutted hands ratio. That's the way to kind of think about it with the two together, okay? Again, some people might just look at that and go, ooh, that's gone over my head. But then when they actually read it and sort of take it in, it helps them more. Excuse me, so that's why this slide is here, okay? Just, it's the same with um, the board texture. These two slides are extremely important. Maybe I've just been really, really bad at explaining them. And I apologize if that's the case, but uh, these two slides here are super important and really, really good for you, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I am going to do one or two more slides, finish there, and then we'll move over to the final slide where we'll do another big one, where we'll finish off the last couple of slides and do some examples. Because I want to do lots of examples at the end to really, really go through them uh, and try and help people understand. So what components impact my decisions to see about and choose sizes? Slide four. One, I open... And I get flattered by in 
position. So that means I might open under the gun or I might open in the hijack and I get flattered from the cutoff or get flattened from the button. Basically, the villain is in position to me. That's more like a GTO line, like calling on calling in the cutoff or calling on the button. It depends on the rake um, and it depends on um, the opening size from villains. Uh, from hero sorry so for example if i open to two to two big blinds under the gun i'm more incentivized and cut off to to do some flatting whereas if i'm open like two and a half or 2.8 or three then i'm disincentivizing um cut off to flat also because of the rake as well whereas the button's always got pure position with the button right whereas the cutoff doesn't so if they want to flat, they can. But what i'm saying is when you do open these early to mid positions and you get um flatted in position cut off button whatever you need to be a bit more careful with how you play so the general rule is when you're being flattered in um when you when you've been flattered in position by a villain generally you start checking more out of position so unless you have again to cover what we've already covered if you have a really good range advantage and not advantage on a lot of boards you open under the gun the board's like ace queen five a seven three whatever you, you will do a lot more c but you'll, you'll still do a lot of c betting the boards where you bet often or you bet range you still do that but on a lot more sort of middling road textures so say for example you raise under the gun the board's like ten nine five or whatever seven nine three you'll do more checking out of position because your range is wider or, or sorry not so much wider but just less condensed a button flat it, it, or, you know, it, this is going to have more like nine ten suited, five six suited, king queen, or you know, king queen suited as well, ace jack. It's going to have or, uh, suited. It's going to have loads of really good hands. It's going to be capped at the nut end. It's not going to flat kings and stuff like that. But you get what I'm saying, right? They're just condensed. They don't have as many. What they don't have such a wide range. They're going to hit the, the hit boards more than you are in a lot of spots. Like their range advantage is going to be more apparent overall in terms of combos on a lot of boards so you should be adopting a, a very heavy check into check call check fold check raise strategy um and then the boards where you just bet range a lot or you just bet often um you, you, you still do that but you just mainly favor checking on a lot of other textures um overall okay in position flatting range may contain less nut end as we said so they're slightly more capped however they kind of supplement that by having a more condensed range than um, a lot of heroes so um, however the overall range will become more condensed as we just said versus a wider opening range so for example if we open like jack 10 off or queen jack off in the hijack or the cutoff whatever the button's not going to flat queen jack off it's not going to flat jack 10 off is, do you see so they're more condensed and they're not going to have some of these weaker weaker hands or as many combos of weaker hands compared to the opener so we need to be careful not to see bet too much and get punished for it effectively we will do some c-betting but we're mainly focused on heavy advantageous boards so again like king queen x ace x x king king x ace queen x etc basically the boards that are really really good for out of position with the nut end with the nut edge um we do more c-betting on but as we said the boards that don't hit us as hard we do more checking than we would naturally because we are more scared of more condensed ranges okay if the big blind flats compared to the button again the big blinds wider aren't they they're going to defend more combos generally than the button might flat so this is the uh yeah this is the last slide we'll do for this part so just a couple of exploitation considerations just first of all if you're playing micro stakes so you're like a 2 and l player 5 and l player 10 and l player whatever really a lot of what we've gone through today is extremely complex and a bit more advanced than you need to know just generally okay however it's still relevant it's just if you're playing at the lowest levels, you're kind of just focusing on fundamental ABC, really basic, like just trying to make as few mistakes as possible rather than outplay your opponents, right? Just playing exploit, easy, easy poker. Exploits, exploitation considerations when thinking about c-betting. At the low, lower micro stakes, we're still focusing on the players more so than we're focusing on like range and nut advantage range advantage board texture sizings do you see like we're mainly focusing on just who is the the donut in front of us aggressive potato tight potato whatever right we generally favor small c betting um little and often at micro stakes but just because it works a lot of the time like you don't risk very you don't risk it's kind of like um it's like sound like a hypocrite in a way because i said earlier we don't want to bet small and often with like too much because we want to be careful that we 
you know, we just don't get the maximum fold equity or value from our hand. We allow a lot of hands to continue and, you know, we don't deny as much equity, blah, blah, fucking blah. But at micro stakes, you don't get raised that often. You don't get exploited that often. People overfold. They don't float in at the right hands. They don't continue. They don't bluff enough. You can just bet small and win a lot more pots than you're probably supposed to. On the flip side as well, when when you have it, just go big. Just, just, just go big. Disrespect your opponents. Just go big. Get called. Get the money and move on. Um, C betting is generally favoured over having like protected checks versus weaker players like fish. Don't trap like don't trap them. Don't like have like balanced deceptive checks with top pairs and stuff. Just especially good ones. Just bet for value. And then finally, we want more protected checks and traps versus regs and nits who aren't going to pay. People who don't call correctly don't, you know, but but however do implode uh, more so versus like checks and so on. Trap them and let them implode or allow them to value bet worse hands where they wouldn't have called you um, in the first place. All right. Right. So the next the next couple of slides is just um, a couple of examples of how to study and then some um, examples of spots we'll go through. That's going to be for part three, guys. So we'll go through that in the next one. So I'm going to leave it there for part two and I will see you in the final um, part three and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Goodbye.